I'm Hog, this is The Dice, and this week we're going to be talking about The Banshee. This week's Irish folklore topic was voted on by my patrons over at Patreon. If you'd like to be able to vote on what topics I cover, then sign up to support me on Patreon! There will be a link in the cards, and another one, a kind of big graphic -y one, on the video screen at the end of this video. Banshee's going to be a little bit different to some of the other topics I've covered in this series so far. Unlike, say, the Doverku or the Dollisher, there is no singular specific story about Banshee. They all tend to be very much along the lines of somebody was out at night, they saw the Banshee, she scream, they run home, next day, someone dead. The end. They're, they're very repetitive and they're very short. So there's not a whole lot to do narratively with the Banshee. But there is an awful lot of very interesting information about the Banshee. Most of which is running somewhat counter to what you might expect from pop culture. Let's hit etymology first. The word Banshee comes from the Irish words Bam, meaning woman, and She, meaning fairy. She also means burial mound. That connection between fairies and the dead is something we're going to address more in future videos. So that means that Banshee literally translates as fairy woman. The Banshee's appearance, however, is fairly inconsistent. She can appear as a very beautiful young woman or a haggard old lady. She can have red curly hair, black curly hair, red straight hair, black straight hair, green hair, grey hair. She can appear in beautiful, sumptuous gowns, in rags. She can appear as a hooded crow, or as hares, or barn owls, or other animals associated with witchcraft in Irish lore. Alright, so banshees are fairy women that can appear as any kind of woman and some animals. But surely hearing one scream still dooms you to death, right? Not really. The Banshee's wail is more musical than that. What Banshees do is called keening. It's a certain kind of mourning song that was sung in pre-Christian Ireland at funerals. Keeners would sing a specific canon of songs called the Quina. Quina being uh, the Irish word for crying. If a family had no keeners, no one who knew the Quina in their ranks, they would hire professional keeners to sing at the funeral. Sometimes the banshee doesn't sing or wail at all. Sometimes the banshee is seen by a riverside washing the clothes of someone who is soon to die. And all of this already sets the banshee in a much more sympathetic light. She's not dooming people to die with her appearance. She is mourning for people. Albeit she's mourning preemptively, but she is sad that someone is going to die and expressing that sadness. But even the idea of the Banshee appearing before someone dies isn't always the case. If we look to more literary sources instead of the oral record, we have examples of Banshees inspiring poets and acting as guardians for noble houses and mourning when great chieftains or kings die, but after they die, not preemptively. That connection to noble houses, though, is mirrored in the oral tradition. Most regions of Ireland will say that the Banshees only sing for usually roughly five specific family lines, but every region that says this differs on which five family lines it is. Collectively, any family whose name begins with Mac or O is a family that the Banshee sings for, according to some part of the tradition in some part of the country. And no, that's not every Irish family. I myself am a Cullen, which is an old Irish name, but doesn't start with Mac and doesn't start with O. It means Holly, by the way. And no, I don't sparkle. So does that mean that the Banshee is a completely harmless entity? For a given definition of harmless, 
You've probably heard stories of how you shouldn't get between a banshee and her comb. And actually, you know what, fuck it. Let's go in for a mini story time to close this off. So one night, a man from an unspecified part of Leinster was on his way home when he heard the banshee keening. It scares the living shit out of him. So he runs like fuck the rest of the way home. He's running so fast and it's so dark that he inevitably loses his footing and face plants onto the road. As he's getting up, he lays his hand on something flat but spiky and he shoves it in his pocket and he gets up and having learned his lesson, he just walks very quickly the rest of the way home. Later that night, he's woken up by the sound of keening outside and bangs on the window. When he looks outside, he sees a banshee. He checks his pocket and he realizes that what he picked up, what he found on the road was her comb. At this point, he's learned his lesson from his lack of caution the night before. If he hadn't ran, and if he hadn't just shoved the random object he found on the road in his pocket, he wouldn't be in this situation. So he thinks a little bit more carefully now. He goes into the kitchen and he fetches a pair of tongs. He picks up the comb with the tongs, opens the window, and hands the comb out to the banshee. And it's a good thing he did exercise a little caution this time, because when he brings the tongs back in, he finds them all mangled and crushed. And he's just thankful he didn't use his hand. So yes, this is the first Irish folklore video of 2018. That's a thing, I suppose. Um, thank you for watching uh, and thank you for sharing it and doing any of that other stuff. And thank you in particular to Neil McConvera and my other wonderful patrons. If you would like to join their number, just click the link that should be on the screen right now. That would be very helpful of you. Otherwise, if you don't have the money, that's fine. Just like, share, comment, they're all very helpful. And remember that your applause is the only way to counteract my daily chant of I don't believe in fairies. <laughs>